the final race of the International Race of Champions will be run on the twisting road course here at the Daytona International Motor Speedway, a course that will demand everything the man and machine has to offer. The final of the International Race of Champions, brought to you by Goodyear, makers of the custom steel guard radio tire, and by the SPP Corporation, makers of world-famous SPP oil treatment and other fine products for your car. Hello, I'm Keith Jackson, and as we come to the championship moment here in our international race of champions, let's get to the basic fact. The one thing that most amuses, I think, a professional race driver, and that's dollar value. And the dollar value of this event will be the highest money per man, per mile, in the history of automobile racing. That's right, 95 miles and $41,000. Working with us as our analyst and commentator, a man who was invited to participate in our race of champions, but who chose to retire, Jackie Stewart of Scotland, who won more Formula One Grand Prix races than any other man, 27 of them. And Jackie, we have six champions, men who are not accustomed to losing. No, this is one of the major points in this motor race as far as I'm concerned. You know, we've seen those drivers winning for years and years, but we've never seen them coming last, or very seldom have we seen that. Today, someone's going to be last, and someone's going to have to be second last. There's an awful lot of money and glory to be won up front, but back there, there's a lot of egos going to be damaged. Now, that's one of the facets. The other facet is that those cars, we've said, are identical as possible in modern motor engineering. They've done this by taking the cars from Germany with the sort of efficiency the Germans have been famous for for years. The cars are identical because the drivers themselves have qualified, not the cars. They've drawn for those cars just before the race, and this is something totally new for them all. They've had no experience in the cars themselves. And as far as I'm concerned, another point, the third point, and perhaps the most sentimental point of this whole race, is the fact that Mark Donahue today is retiring. The emotional feelings that this man must be going through is tremendous. I've gone through it myself, I know what it feels like. This is the last time that he's going to sit in a car in competition all his life. He's had a tremendous success throughout his career, he's a great racing driver, and today will be the last time that anyone will see him competing in a motor car. It must be a very big day for Mark Donahue. I'm sure it is. The road course, which will be used for this race here at Daytona International Motor Speedway, is 3.81 miles in length, and they use all of the facility, the road course, plus the oval track. Let's have a look at this facility now with Jackie Stewart. This is the Daytona International Speedway that most people know, the big super speedway, the tri-oval. But today, for the International Race of Champions, not only are we going to use this racetrack, but we're also going to use the infield. Because when you pass the start-finishing line, you're going to do a left-hand bend, accelerate along here and go into a heavy braking area and of course downshifting through the transmission this is the sort of place in the road course where we're going to see people being able to overtake under braking you do the right hand hairpin here and of course accelerate again along this short chute with a left hand kink a dog leg in the middle again you're going to get into a fierce braking situation and of course downshifting once more and again the opportunity to overtake in the infield if anyone makes a mistake this is the sort of place that passing will be made you go through the right hand hairpin here along a short acceleration area where of course gear changing is going to come into it once again and onto the high bank oval which of course we've seen before. We'll go through the left hand high bank section along the back straights where undoubtedly there's going to be slipstreaming and drafting before going in again to the high banking, the 31 degree banking of the Daytona Speedway. Along here, out of that banking to the start finishing line once again where of course we'll be entering this left hand bend. Thank you Jackie. There'll be some hairy moments out there, you can be sure. We just had a startling sight come into view. George Fulmer with a patch over his right eye. Let's go down to Chris Economaki on Pitt Road and get that story. Well, George, the obvious question is what has happened to your eye? Uh, it uh, looks like I got some form of matter in it just uh, last night. Actually, I was taking a shower. Something must have washed into it, and uh, uh, it's irritated the eyeball. And, uh, of course, it's very, very sensitive and uh, watering a lot. So they put some salve in there to... Uh, take the pain and the irritation away and uh, hopefully by the race, time the race gets going I'll be uh, able to take the patch off and see properly. Meantime, the drivers, Donahue, Revson, Pearson, Fulmer, Unser, Foyt, are waiting for the call to enter their cars and begin the final run of the International Race of Champions to start in a moment. The first lap on this International Race of Champions finale will be run entirely on the oval course. Thus, drafting will become a very important factor, Jackie, at the outset of this race. 
this drafting is going to play a big part because they've set their practice times, they've set the poor position for Mark Donahue and he's going to lose that advantage almost certainly on that first lap round the tri-oval because the drafting is going to allow these other cars to go round the tri-oval and certainly do a lot of shuffling, a lot of passing before they enter the racetrack, the road course, on that second lap. The safety car has pulled off the racetrack. The field of six champions now beginning to pull together and they approach the start line symmetrically perfectly aligned Donahue in the orange car Revson in the black car on the left it is Fulmer in the yellow car on the left David Pearson is in the purple car Bobby Unser in the blue and AJ Ford in the red and here we go George Fulmer takes a jump in the yellow car and he moves immediately up in front of Mark Donahue at the top. Donahue down low may fight him off. Tightly bunched. In the black car, Peter Revson goes high and drops off the pace. It is Mark Donahue regaining the lead as they come out of turn two and head up the back straight. George Fulmer in the yellow car in a good drafting position to take a shot at Donahue if he wants it. Fulmer passes Donahue. A.J. Ford picking up the draft on the straight. Comes down low. Now it's going to get crowded. Going through turn three. Heading for four. Fulmer is high. Ford is low. And here comes the orange car. Mark Donahue. David Pearson again. Right in behind Donahue. As Fulmer has the lead. Bobby Unser in the blue car. Making the move. They're still tightly back. Now they will enter the road course. The brakes, all six men hit the brakes simultaneously and they go in tight in the pack. There's some dust and dirt, but it is George Fulmer in the yellow car who has the lead. And again, somebody is on the dirt. Mark Donahue dropping off to third, but here he comes back now as he fights off David Pearson. Fulmer leads the pack into the first horseshoe. Jackie in there, hanging together. Really shuffling away. I'm just thinking going in there. They do side by side. Roll the corner. Absolutely fantastic. Absolutely wonderful motor racing. This is what everyone come to see, catching the dust on the way out. And off they go up that back straight. The yellow car, they're quite a lead. George Fulmer is already. David Pearson jumping up into second place. Mark Donahue was the man who drew the dirt as they worked their way through the kink, and he dropped off the pace. Peter Revson has settled back into the last position. Now as they work their way out of the road course and go back onto the trioval, the leader is George Fulmer in the yellow car. It is David Pearson, A.J. Ford, Mark Donahue, Peter Revson, and Bobby Unser. Now they're back on the trioval, past turn one, heading for turn two. It'll be interesting to see in this big, fast part of the circuit whether they're going to be able to catch up on George Fulmer. The man who had had trouble with his eyes earlier today has got a real good start on them going down that back straightaway, and we'll see how far behind the draft can be picked up. But it seems to me that George Fulmer taking out a little bit of an advantage. It's going to be very difficult to get him under those conditions on this lap. A.J. Point, dropping off the pace. Slowing down. Looks like he's got car trouble. This is the first time the men saw these automobiles this morning as George Fulmer comes out of turn number four and he leads the pack down across the finish line with Mark Donahue in second place, David Pearson, Bobby Unser and Peter Revson running side by side and A.J. Fort now way back and slowing down. A.J. may be in a crippled automobile. So here comes A.J. headed toward the pits. You're watching the International Race of Champions for championship run. We'll have more in a moment. George Fulmer leads the group into the horseshoe with Donahue running second, Pearson third. Bobby Upton now four and Peter Upton five. And they have closed some on Fulmer. Now, whether or not George can pick it up again going into the kink, but it's Pearson running most impressively. The Martini Rossi Driver of the Year in 1973. A.J. Point is in the pit. Well, it was a short one, A.J. What gave out? The uh, same damn thing's been going on all month here. I just hadn't had no luck down here this year, I guess. For a while there, you looked pretty good. Yeah, we was real competitive and everything felt good. And uh, I had trouble getting in gear the first lap. And uh, either I floated a valve or something. That's what happened then. If something happened then, you dropped the cylinder. There's always tomorrow's Daytona 500, AJ. Right. Okay, I'm disappointed, AJ. Back to you, Keith. 
George Fulmer in the yellow car. He is not running away from the fact, Jackie. No, he's he's staying out there, but Mark Donahue seems to be closing up right at this very moment. The glass is certainly working for Mark. He's really tucked in there. I think we're going to see a pass coming out of turn four here. He's drawing alongside. He's coming in alongside now. They're coming in side by side. He's taking the lead there. Mark was through into this braking area. They're about to hit the brakes now. Here they go under the brakes. Mark's holding the tight line in. George is keeping a, the right distance behind him as they go into that turn into the infield. And we've had some dramatic changes back in the back, too, as Mark Donahue gets the lead over George Fulmer. It is Peter Revson who has come from last place to move up into third place, passing David Pearson and Bobby Unser, and David Pearson now has fallen off the pace as well. So David may be having some trouble with his Porsche Carrera. As they work their way through the horseshoe, you see that Pearson, who was running in second place just a lap ago, now has dropped off the pace. It is Mark Donahue leading in the orange car with Fulmer in the yellow car second, Peter Epson running third, Bobby Unser and David Pearson. Mark Donahue leading this race, and this is a very important race for Mark. His last race as a competitive driver, and this is an enormous thing for any racing driver. The emotion that must be going through him, the pressure to try and win this race, the all-important race in his career. A wonderful performance throughout his motor racing career, and this would really be a great reward for him to finish up winning it. He's certainly leading at this moment, he's setting the pace, and George Fulmer, of course, is sticking in behind him there. But we, we did see David Pearson falling back there, but that could not perhaps be as much trouble as we, we thought for the first time. I think perhaps he just missed the gear. This is one of the problems in driving a five-speed gearbox for, for David Pearson, who's not used as much as everyone else to gear changing. I think he just missed the gear and has dropped back, but I think we'll see him coming back again. In the orange car, number one, the pole sitter, Mark Donahue. Second place, George Fulmer in the yellow car. Running in third place, it is Peter Repson. Bobby Unser now in the fourth spot, beginning to take a draft and take a run. And Repson is the blue car, the USAC champion. Indy winner, 1968. Passes Repson and holds third place. Revson, however, sitting right in behind. The veteran from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Peter now beginning to get a draft on the straight. Revson and Unser in a battle. Revson comes up alongside. And Peter Revson moves into third place. So Peter, who has driven race cars all over the world, moves into third place as he slips past Bobby Unser. Meantime, Mark Donahue in the orange car leads over George Fulmer in the yellow car. First and second there, and the lap speed for the lead is now better than 115 miles an hour. This the final run in the international race of champions for the moment. Five cars running in the championship run of the International Race of Champions. The leader is Mark Donahue, George Fulmer losing a little distance to him. Peter Revson is running back in there and seems to have slowed down. David Pearson still has not been able to pick up the pace. And as they move down the back straight, you see that Donahue has pulled away from George Fulmer's stop. But George will close it as he starts to get the draft. And the indication from the drivers who had had the practice time was that if they could stay within a couple of hundred feet, they would get the effects of the draft. The closer you are, the better, but as long as you're within a couple of hundred feet, you can benefit from the effects of it. So it is Donahue leading the group down off turn number four, with Fulmer right behind him now, closing it up, and Bobby Unser is now moving up to chase Peter Revson in their fight for third place. Going into the infield again, and the two other cars, Peter Revson, Bobby Unser going in there, tightening up. Bobby Unser, Bobby Unser really tightening up. The third and fourth battle, very hot as well. Bobby trying to edge in there. Seems to close up slightly. Still a little way. Peter Revson is gear changing again. They're going through that into braking again for this rear thin bend. They're going down into second gear for this corner. They're in second gear now, applying the power. As they go out the corner, they're getting into third gear. As they're going along there, into third gear and into fourth gear before the left-hand kick. Donahue is in the orange car. He leads. George Fulmer of Arcadia, California, is in the yellow car. George, incidentally, will be seen tomorrow in the Daytona 500, running as a rookie, age 40. A vastly experienced man, but taking the plunge into NASCAR Grand National Racing as of tomorrow in the Daytona 500, which you'll see over most of these ABC stations with portions of the Southeast United States blacked out. Now they're back on the flyover with Donahue holding his lead, over pursuing. The battle goes on between Revson and 
Bobby Umser for third place, and David Pearson continues to lose ground to the leader. David, I think, has lost an awful lot of ground here, and it's going to be very difficult. There's David in the picture there. He just doesn't seem to be going as quickly as he should. Now, he may be having a mechanical problem here. Maybe his engine has gone a little off song, because I'm afraid he's lost the draft. There's, there's a big difference between from where he is and where third and fourth, where Bobby Unser has just taken over. And there are the leaders. There's Mark Donahue leading in the orange car with George Puma there in the yellow car in second position. If they come off the banking, off turn four, and go along to the start finishing line here, where they're going to be putting the brakes on for the first left hand and going into the infield. This is the place where they could pass. But George Puma is making no attempt to pass. He's in unison. And there's the third or fourth. There's a pass going in there. And there we have Bobby Unser. There was an attempted pass here by by Peter Wilson, but he there is sitting in, he's accelerating out, he's getting a slight closing up situation on Bobby as they go from second gear, second gear into third gear, accelerating along before the right hand bend, Bobby Anser in the lead, in third position, breaking hard, back into second gear, putting it in there, Peter Wilson really getting up his stacks there, accelerating out where they'll engage third gear and fourth gear along before the next car. The two leaders, Mark Donahue in the orange car, and George Fulmer in the yellow car are running just about five seconds ahead of Bobby Unser in the blue car and Peter Revson in the black machine. Here we are, Mark W, number one, and George Fulmer there trying very hard at number four, closing up the gap a little bit there on Mark as he accelerates out onto the banking and of course into the draft once again. Mark Donahue has in a way, dominated the race so far in this way. Once he's taken his lead, he's kept it securely. He's never really looked threatened. But on this occasion, coming down onto the back straight, it seems to me that George Fulmer in the number four car, the yellow car, is a little bit closer to Mark Donahue than he was in the previous lap. We'll put a clock on him and see whether or not the third and fourth place cars are losing time and distance to the two leaders. It appears that they are, as Fulmer pursues Donahue and Bobby Unser of USAC is driving and Fulmer now as we look back up to the front of the pack has closed right in behind Mark Donahue Fulmer's in the yellow car and here they come out of that turn number four Mark staying lower than he was before Josh trying to go over the top Mark staying down the racetrack so Josh can't get through down that lap Josh thinking about going under but no staying above and staying behaving himself behind there and the third and fourth place cars, Bobby Unser and Peter Revson, have lost time and distance to the leaders. Bobby now is running almost seven seconds back of the leader. And Peter Revson working his way there in the black car, still pursuing Bobby Unser. And David Pearson has dropped way back and would at the moment appear to be out of the contest. A.J. Ford having gone out, his machine, the Porsche Carrera, gave out on him. Mark Donahue leads. George Fulmer pursues in the International Race of Champions. The fight for first place right there with Donahue, number one car orange, George Fulmer. In the number four yellow car, both these men representing SDCA American Road Racing in the International Race of Champions. And the only major category missing was Formula One Grand Prix Racing, where Denny Holm and Emerson Fittipaldi failed to qualify out of the three elimination races that were run at the Riverside International Raceway in Southern California. David Pearson, incidentally, who is sitting at the back of the pack here in the championship run of the International Race of Champions, will be starting on the pole tomorrow in the Daytona 500. Bobby Unser and Peter Evson continuing their own personal duel as uh, Peter now has moved back into third place, dropping Bobby to four. It'll be interesting to see if Peter in the road force part of this race track can take some advantage, but we're back in the leaders again with Mark and George driving around there as if they were brother and sister. Peter Evson working his way through the kink. In third place is Bobby Unser of USAC racing the championship car and George Fulmer had a spin. George Fulmer has spun out 
And that gives Mark Donahue an enormous lead. So George Fulmer and the short horseshoe fun. Handle it well. That's the major exit from the frames for George Fulmer this motor race. If Mark Donahue does not make a mistake, it's going to be very difficult for anyone to get up to him. But George Fulmer, on the other hand, may have difficulty with Peter Revson and with Bobby Unser, who of course are going to be catching him up. There's the relation between between Mark Donahue now in the lead and George Fulmer, who was just through a few seconds ago right up beside that car. And there now we find George Fulmer, who's going to be a very unhappy man because of his mistake. From George Fulmer, we see the relationship back to the third and fourth race where Peter Revson is in third position and being passed now by Bobby Unser. As they go into the high banking, Bobby Unser took the grass and has them through low under Peter Revson. This is the 31 degree banking of the Daytona International Speedway. Banking, of course, but they seem to be handling it very well. As they come off the banking and Peter Revson closes right up again, right up the exhaust pipe, and we see Mark Donahue in the number one car, the orange car, out in the lead. George Palmer is running about 7.1 seconds behind Mark Donahue at the present time as a result of his spin. And uh, that is not too bad considering the fact that he was inactive there for just a moment. But fortunately for George, Mark Donahue was working his way out of the short horseshoe, preparing to make the turn back onto the trioval. Otherwise, George could have been 10, 11 seconds back. He might have even been in fourth place. But he handled his position very well, and he's now just about seven seconds back of Mark Donahue. And uh, George Fulmer is going to get some pressure, Jackie, as you noted, I think, from Peter Epson and from uh, Bobby Unser as Peter moved up made a bit of a bold move that time as they worked through the kink but then decided the better of it and he will sit back there in the number four spot as they take the short horseshoe turn it'll be very interesting to see if these two cars can catch up george because when a driver does make a mistake it takes him a few laps to settle back in again the adrenaline seems to pump very hard and of course it takes him a few laps to again collect himself and drive as smoothly and as quietly as he should be driving Mark Donahue leads in the orange car. George Fulmer, well back in the yellow Porsche Carrera, followed by Bobby Unser, Peter Revson, and David Pearson, well back in number five position. Mark Donahue of Reading, Pennsylvania, 36 years of age, driving his final race in his brilliant career. He will drive race cars no more when this one is done. He has already won in the International Race of Champions $13,500, winning two of the three elimination races. He finished 12th in the other. If he wins today, Mark will go home with more than $54,000, and that is not a bad way to stay so long. Big battle still going on between the two cars there in third and fourth position. You have Bobby Unser in the blue car, followed by the number two car, the number two starting position, Peter Revson in the black Porsche behind Bobby Unser in fourth position. A.J. Foyt dropped out of the competition very early. Had bad luck with his car. A.J. not in it. He's watching now. George Fulmer dropping off the pace after pursuing Mark Donahue, had a spin in the short horseshoe. George getting a little more pressure now from Bobby Unser there in the blue Carrera. And Peter Epson content for the moment to run in fourth spot. George must be very unhappy about this because I really felt as if he was setting Mark up to have a real go at him. And of course he's made this small error of judgment. It's very easy to do when pressure's like that and of course when you're very close to another car. And there we have George Fulmer in second place. And we're going to see the relationship now right up the racetrack until we get to the first position to Mark Donahue. And it's a long way around the racetrack. And there in the orange car and the number one car is Mark Donahue, the man who's going to make it his very last time in a competition car in competition today. This moment for Mark Donahue is very special. Just before the start of the race, Chris Ikatamaki talked briefly with him. It's an honor to be in this race in the first place. It's an honor to be on the pole. And uh, I have to now forget about the emotional part and concentrate on, on just driving of the, of the race. It's a hard thing to do knowing it's the last time I'll ever be in a race car. And, and that, you know, makes you think a little bit. But uh, that's a fact of life, something that I've chosen to do myself. And 
if I'm regretful about it, I only have myself to blame, and so I'm going to do the best job I can and see what happens. Mark, many drivers have retired, and many have come back. Will this be your last race? It really will, Chris. I, I, I wouldn't go through this mental aggravation if I had any idea that I would come back. Uh, it's very easy, you know, I could just say, okay, I come back now, and, and I'm back, but uh, I feel that, you know, I'll be able to look back in two years' time and say I did the right thing, and I sure hope that, that when that time comes, that will be the reaction I get. Mark Donahue leading this final leg of the International Race of Champions. He's holding better than an eight-second lead over George Fulmer, the second-place car, and he's almost 15 seconds ahead of the third and fourth place drivers Peter Epson and Bobby Unser. Mark Donahue driving a very smooth race. One of the talents that Mark has is to be sympathetic with his car. He understands cars probably better than any other racing driver in the world today. He's very smooth and he's very clean. This is the hallmark of a real champion and of a very fine racing driver. Mark Donahue has learned. He's a great engineer. That's one of his greatest talents. And he drives a car really with the smoothness and finesse that one has to. And this is why he's been successful. He hasn't made mistakes. And in doing so, he's been able to hold his car very quietly to be reliable. And of course, this is a great secret. I think, Jackie, that it's, it would be timely to make this point. Now, you are a relatively slight man in comparison, let's say, to a Buddy Baker of NASCAR Grand National Racing or to A.J. Ford of USAC Racing or Bobby Unser. It does not take muscle in this kind of automobile racing. It takes the delicate handling. It does take a delicate touch, but at the same time, the racing driver has to be very fit indeed. Whether he's tall or small, Mario Andretti is a very small man, but a very strong man. But I don't think it's necessary really to be a very big man. There are some very big racing drivers who are also very good. But here you're seeing men driving today that I think we're seeing some of the finest racing drivers in the world. There, in fact, is the race fourth, third, and fourth position. It seems to me that Bobby Unser has pulled out a bit of an advantage over Peter Revson. Bobby Unser there in the blue car, followed by Peter Revson in the black car. And Bobby Unser, over the last couple of years, driving the Van Journey Eagles, has been consistently the fastest of the USAC drivers in the qualifications. He has not had a great deal of racing luck over the last couple of years in USAC championship car competition, but when they have come out for the sprints to determine qualifying positions, consistently, Bobby Unser has been among the quickest. Before the race, we also spent just a moment with Bobby Unser to talk about this event. One of your greatest talents as a racing driver is traffic, getting in and out traffic. Now, of course, there's not going to be quite so much traffic with only six cars, but you are going to have to get in there. Well. Yes, uh, hopefully it's going to be six cars going to be tightly bunched together. And of course, if that's the case, then uh, I think it'll make a better show, but I like it a lot better myself. Because the cars seem to be, we haven't driven the race cars yet, but uh, at this track, but I think that the cars are going to be pretty well matched. And if they are, it's going to be a uh, heck of a race. <laughs> Bobby, you had a big accident just after the last qualifying race at Riverside, and this is your first race since then. How are you feeling? Are you completely fit? Well, I'm not completely fit, Jackie. I'd be foolish to say that I am, but uh, I think I'm in fair shape. I'm probably 80% uh, of what my normal would be, and uh, I don't think it's going to affect me now. I think I've been laid off an awful long time. <laughs> Now, is there going to be any special tactic with regard to slipstreaming or drafting round here? Because, of course, the road course section is not as long here as the bank section or the open part of the racetrack is. Well, I think that that's going to make a tremendous difference. If, uh, if somebody is able to get out in front and break the slipstream, then, of course, he'll have no contest at all. And the battle continues to rage between Bobby Hunter, Bobby Horton Carrera, and Peter Revson in the black as Mark Donahue begins to stretch out his lead over second place George Fulmer. But this is the fight right now between Hunter in blue and Revson in black. And the yellow car now, which is driven by George Fulmer, is just coming out of the turn and going onto the road course, and George Fulmer has slowed down. Something must be wrong with George's car. And he's come down low and drops off the pace, and Bobby Hunter is now running in second place. Peter Revson goes by to take third. And George Fulmer has a sick automobile. Yes. Oh, after a very, very healthy drive, had trouble. And here are the two men who now find themselves in second and third position. Bobby Unser 
second position, and there's George Thomas. Very bad luck for George today. He had a problem, he had an eye infection last night, and here he is today, having driven beautifully so far, and now obviously in trouble. He's off the groove, he's getting back, I should think, to the pits. He's not going any faster now than he would be in the street, and this is a disappointed George Fulmer. There is George Fulmer talking to the mechanics. And George has unbuckled and he'll be getting out in a moment as Mark Donahue works his way through the road course portion here at Daytona International Motor Speedway. Now let's go down to pit road. Here is Chris Economaki with George. All right. You've got to do him right. George, uh, you're the second mad driver to... George, you're the second mad driver to step out. What was the problem? Well, they don't get the shift pattern lined up. Every car you get into shifts differently, and this one here worked good for a couple laps, and it looked like it started loosening up, and then I couldn't get uh, fourth and third gear. How's your eye? It's watering, but I can see all right. No, everything was fine, but they just uh, the car got worse and worse. They couldn't shift it, and I overhead the motor and blew the dropped the valve. Well, you've got the Daytona 500 to make up for, George, tomorrow. Well, this one's over. Okay, back to Keith Jackson. Thank you, Chris. And here comes Mark Donahue, running out of turn number four. And we'll get a clock on him. He has an enormous lead over second place. Bobby Unser. As he comes across the start-finish line, Bobby Unser and Peter Revson running second and third are just now coming out of turn number four. So they're well back. And and here he going, and there he goes. He's trying to go under. Peter Rest is trying to go under. Bobby Anderson has to go. Tight corner before the red course. There he goes with only 10 laps to go. He didn't quite make it. Bobby Anderson still in that second position. And Mark Donahue running smoothly. And out there all by himself, leading by better than 16 seconds. 16 seconds is all very well, but he has to finish. And this is what Mark Donahue is going through. The anguish now that Mark Donahue knows that he's got a big advantage. There he is on the screen, the number one on Oscar Ayer with Mark Donahue, but he has to knock the car. He can't do any small error now, mechanically or physically, or he can lose this race still, even with this big lead. Jackie, when you're running that far, all by yourself, alone, every little clink sounds like a roll of thunder, I'm sure. I tell you, it's one of the most terrible feelings. Everywhere along, there's a vibration develops. There's something goes wrong. In fact, in every race that I've ever won from this position, I've had a sort of nervous key where something's gone wrong. And I'm sure Mark's imagining all sorts of mechanical disasters at this very moment. Never, in fact, have I won a race when I felt that the car is completely right. I've always been criticizing it while I've been driving. And I suppose Mark's looking for the same thing right now, but boy, he must be praying, because this is very last motor race. The question now is whether or not Peter Revson is playing a waiting game with Bobby. Is he going to wait and try to slingshot him on the final lap? Because there is a difference in prize money, the difference between second and third, $4,000. 41 grand to the winner. Mark Donahue may have that in his pocket unless bad luck bites him. That would give him a total of $54,500 for the series of four races. Second place is worth $13,000, third place $9,000, and fourth place $6,000. David Pearson, who will be the pole sitter in tomorrow's Daytona 500, is trailing the field. And you'll see the Daytona 500 live and in color for the first time over most of these ABC stations, except for portions of the southeastern part of the United States. Mark, who leaves automobile racing as a competitor in only one sense, because he becomes the manager of the Penske Racing Group, which means he will be deeply involved, but more in a posture to exercise his engineering know-how. A great developer of automobiles, a very quiet man, but a very innovative man. A very modest man. This man, I think, has been quieter than any leading star in motor racing that I've ever known. You almost don't hear Mark Donahue when he's around the racetrack, and if, if he would have his way, you would probably never see him either. He really is a very modest man, and of course a great driver. That's Donahue going through the kicks, going into what is called a short horseshoe on the road course portion of the Daytona facility. He's still running some 14, 15 seconds ahead of the 
for Sewer. Bobby Unser second, and Peter Revson in third. Oh, oh, uh, P Bobby Unser got it really out there in the dirt. He could easily have made a mistake there. That could have cost him second place. It could have cost him third place even. Because the car really did get its tail end out. He got a lot of oversteer on there. He applied opposite lock, kept the power on, and got it tucked back in again. The lightning reaction that, of course, is needed when you are a racing driver. And under this sort of pressure, those are the sort of things that can happen. Peter Revson sitting there behind him saw this whole thing. Now we're going to try and show you this in slow motion. And here they go into this left-hander. He's used up a little bit of extra road. He starts to go there at this time. The car starts to weave a little bit. The tail end goes out. It gets out onto that loose stuff, and that's very slippery. He's applied opposite lock. You can see the angle of the car, but he does hold it. Keeps the power on. Peter Revson's already used less road, using fresh road, as you can see from the tire marks just behind him, to try and take advantage of Bobby, but not to be. So there he is, still holding his lead. Bobby Unser over Peter Revson at this time. Now the conjecture, the speculation is that Donahue has backed off because he's running along with a big lead. The one thing that there's no way we can know, and only Mark Donahue could possibly know, is whether or not his car is still performing at an optimum level, if it's still sound. It appears that Bobby Unser and Peter Revson certainly have sound automobiles as they continue to joust for that second spot. <laughs> and in that relationship shot, you can see there's just over 10 seconds of difference. In that last lap there, on the last lap they've just completed, they've taken another second off of Mark Donahue's lead. Now, whether they've taken it off or Mark Donahue's given them it are two different things. But I'm sure that Mark's taking his time here. But, you know, there's so many different things in a race car. They've tried to put these race cars together so that they're identical in every way. They've got the, they've got the same situation all the way through here. They've been trying to get them ideally suited. Now, Mark Donahue, what a great day for him. Leaving motor racing on this his last day as a competitive driver with a win. If he can just keep this car on the road in good condition for well, just a little while longer, we're going to see Mark going out with a victory. And that, for any racing driver, is a tremendous feeling of, of pleasure. There are four cars running as Donahue leads, and we look back down the track to second place Bobby Unser, third place Peter Revson. David Pearson has been lapped by the first three cars. He is running in fourth spot. A.J. Ford was the first man to leave the race, and he will finish in the number six position for $3,500. George Fulmer went out at about the halfway point, and George will get $5,000 for his fifth place finish. And there is the white flag, one thousand to go for Mark Donahue as he strives to win the International Race of Champions. Here's the battle now as Donahue goes into the road course. Bobby Unser and Peter Revson. And Revson moves up behind Unser. The fight for second place should be something to see. Donahue's well out in front. Let's watch what happens between these two great drivers, Unser in the blue and Revson in the black. This is going to be fantastic. See if Bobby Unser can hold off Peter Revson under this sort of pressure. Peter's been holding back, I think. It's interesting to see now. A puff of smoke came out of Unser's car there as he went through that turn. Now they're accelerating along. They haven't got too long to go. Peter can't be too far away. It's going to have to be on the draft. As long as Bobby doesn't make a mistake in this last lap, Revson's going to have to do a drafting job on him on this back straight away and through this last big three and four section of the course. And he's right inside him again. Peter Revson in the black car, the number two car, Peter Revson behind the blue car of Bobby Answer, and he's really tucking himself in, using a different piece of road, as you can see from Bobby there, as they go along through the last corner, and he's really up again before they go on to the super speedway, and he's right tucked in behind him. This is the closest he's been over these last few laps, and he's really in a position to draft here. So the old NASCAR trademark slingshotting has got to come into play here if Peter Revson has the horsepower to pull it in tight behind Unser. Donahue way out in front and he's cruising along uh, going off the back straight into turn number three and here's Unser now with Revson trying to close on him on the back straight. This is the fight for second place. Second place is worth 13,000. Third place worth 9,000. They're in turn number three. Donahue coming off turn number four. Mark can almost coast home now and win it. Donahue coming down here for the start finish line. The second flag is in the air. And Mark Donahue has won the International Race of Champions. And what a race it's going to be. He's going to try to get up the inside. Is he going to do it? He's got it. 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 He's got
fantastic. They banged door handles as Peter Epson went down low and Bobby Hunter banged into him a little bit but could do nothing about it as Peter Epson used the slingshot, used the draft, and let's take another look at it in slow motion. And here we go, see in slow motion, this action by Peter Revson as he comes into this last kink on this road track, this racing track here at the corner. He's coming through, there he's coming through, and the two cars are getting very close together. There they touch. Now, Peter Revson's really right on that line there. Bobby Hunter's trying to get down, but he can. He's really snooker. He's really in a situation of kiss, they've come apart, and now Peter Revson's got the line to rush to the finishing line. A fantastic piece of driving on the last lap. There you see the checkered flag as Peter Revson takes it just by a whisker. So it is Mark Donahue, SCCA Road Racing, winning it. $54,500 for Mark. Peter Revson takes second place. SCCA Road Racing. Bobby Youngster, USAC Championship Car Racing, finishes third. David Pearson of NASCAR takes fourth. George Palmer, SCCA Road Racing five, and A.J. Point, USAC Championship Car Racing, finishes sixth. Sometime in July 1976, the planet Mars is going to receive a visitor. A 2,000-pound Viking lander will gently descend on a Goodyear-built NASA parachute attached with a remarkable new fiber. Very light, but very strong. Today on Earth, Goodyear engineers use this advanced fiber to produce belts of X-10, a revolutionary tire cord used in these special racing radials seen performing here at the International Race of Champions. X-10 cord is as strong as steel, yet only one-fifth the weight. It helps a racing tire run quick and nimble. By the time the Viking lands on Mars, you could be riding on Goodyear tires made with X-10 belts. X-10, the tire cord designed to revolutionize the radial. Only from Goodyear. Fellas, you both are covered with perspiration. You put on a fantastic race, and what a finish. Congratulations, Peter. How did you pull it off? Well, I, we were playing a little bit out there, passing and repassing. It seemed like Bobby could pass me at the top end easier than I could pass him. And uh, I figure I might be able to do it once, so I better make that once count. Bobby, when did you know you had it? Well, I knew a long time before that. You see, at the, at the extreme top end, Pete was just a little teeny bit faster, but I could get him real bad on the, uh, say for example, through fourth and fifth gear on the bottom end. I could, uh, you know, up to the, almost the top I could get him, but on the very, very, very top, I knew that he could get me pretty good, and I was worried about that last turn. I've been worried about it half the race. <laughs> Bobby, did you make any mistakes during the race? Of course I did. I've never driven a race in my life. I haven't made mistakes. <laughs> Peter, how about you? Yeah, I made a couple of small ones, but I, uh, luckily they didn't count for too much. Mark, many congratulations. From one retired racing driver, now to another, I can only say that we're all very, very pleased at today's show. You must be very happy. I really am, Jackie, and uh, it's just a wonderful way to end a, a, a long association with Roger and, and uh, uh, race cars in general, but uh, uh, really I, I want to say goodbye to the fans, the guys who, and the gals who have been so good to me over the, over the years. It's been really wonderful. Well, there must be an awful lot of people you must be thinking of just now. I know exactly how it is. I mean, I remember my emotional feelings at that time. This must be an emotional moment for you. It is. It's, it's hard to believe it's finally come. And uh, now that it's here, it's, it's hard to, to cope with it. But uh, uh, the fans, the guys who stand, stood out and watched this last race were, were really cheering at the end. And, and uh, I'll remember that a long time in my life. It must be wonderful to go out as a winner. I wish to congratulate you, Mark, on this terrific performance today. You've done a great throw all the way through the, the race of champions, and you won today and left motor racing with a great memory of you. Thanks a lot, Jackie. This is Jackie Stewart. I think the race of champions, the international race of champions, has been wonderful motor racing. It's one of the things that I'm disappointed that I have not competed in. I would have loved to have done it. To everyone who's seen it, they've had great motor racing. To Mark Donahue as a winner, I really do congratulate him. The official order of finish, Mark Donahue, $54,500, Peter Epson, $21,200, Bobby Youngster, $19,100, David Pearson, $14,600, George Fulmer, $16,000, and A.J. Ford, $9,900. This is Keith Jackson, the executive producer of ABC Sports' Bruno Alley.
International Race of Champions, produced by Chet Forty, directed by Larry Cam, Associate Director Jack Gallivan, Technical Director Werner Gunther. Travel arrangements made through promotion will be paid by United Airlines, doing business in 113 cities. United Airlines, the friendly skies of your land. Today's coverage of the final of the International Race of Champions was brought to you by Goodyear, makers of the custom Steel Guard radio tire, and by British Leyland, the makers of the MGB, the MGB GT, and the MG Midget. The preceding a presentation of ABC Sports recognized around the world as the leader in sports television.